Gary Black was just on TV to talk about Elon Musk's latest controversy that supposedly affects Tesla and Gary Black gave his latest thoughts about Tesla and how bullish he is. How much does this concern you at this point with just what continue to be these uh, decisions by him to engage on these controversial topics that seem to alienate a lot of people? Well, look, we're investment managers and we get paid to find stocks that are going to, you know, triple over the next five years. And our view is, you know, despite remarks like he made, which we don't like, uh, and I can't, you know, embrace what he said or even condone it at all. I, I think the stock is still a great stock because EV adoption today is 12 and it's going to go to 60 over the next seven years. And Tesla right now has about 16 percent share of that EV space. And with Cybertruck, um, a refresh Model 3, and most importantly, a $25,000 vehicle, we think it can still, you know, grow its volumes 30 to 35 percent a year. I, I, as a growth manager, I cannot find growth stocks that have volume growth of 30 to 35 percent a year, earnings growth of 40 percent a year, trading at 40 times. But Elon, bad. So therefore, Tesla, bad. And therefore, Tesla stock, bad. But yet, Gary is actually pretty smart and he's not selling Tesla stock. He understands the growth potential is huge. Elon always had opinions, strong opinions, controversial opinions. It's just a part of being a Tesla stock investor. The good outweighs the bad. The investment question we have to ask is, will this impact the brand? You know, I don't know if it's anti-Semitic what he said or not. I, I don't I don't know if that's that's true. I don't think Elon has any problem with Jewish people overall. He does have a problem with ADLs messaging and any other groups who push de facto anti-white racism or anti-Asian racism or racism of any kind. I understand though why Gary does not want to fully defend Elon here because if he does, he may lose some clients. And it is not just me saying it, it is also Gary basically implying that himself. But yeah. what, I, what I'm trying to figure out as an investor, is it gonna impact the brand? Is it gonna cause consumers Rather than think about charging convenience and safety and performance and the technology, are they going to be saying, hey, it's run by a CEO who, you know, embraced a, a, a post that talked about, you know, hatred uh, of, of one group right. versus another. Right. And I, I think mean, at the end of the day, I think consumers yeah. are going to evaluate the, the, the product on its merits and not. So you're not CEO. worried then, Gary. I mean, again, and by the way, I said this earlier, you know, I, I know a number of people who are close to or at least somewhat close to Musk. And, you know, they, they don't think he's an anti-Semite. I don't. Uh, I don't but he does make these decisions, Gary, to engage yeah. in things. By the way, he encourages it, though, by by choosing to uh, uh, either post or or uh, or uh, point to certain t uh, tweets and the like. Um, but you don't seem to think it's going to matter in terms of people's willingness to embrace the brand. I think at the end of the day, Tesla has a best-in-class product. They are the best at manufacturing. They can drive costs down the quickest. And look, they've shown an ability to figure out what consumers are going to want long before GM, Ford, Stellantis, and everybody else. And I think that's going to continue. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I don't want to comment on whether his comment was was anti-Semitic or not. I don't know if that's important. But I don't think the consumer, at the end of the day, is going to hold the CEO's comments in their, what I call a, a purchase decision of whether to buy a Tesla. I could be wrong, but right. that to me at the end of the day is what's the most important to think about. Props to Gary for saying that he thinks that Elon is not anti-Semi. That's basically like him saying that these things that Elon posted or tweeted are not anti-Semitic. Not, he's not saying that directly, but he's basically saying that indirectly. And I do respect that he flat out admitted that he just doesn't want to comment on these posts specifically. I, I can respect that because he's not trying to dodge the question. He just says he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, the decision these days about whether to buy a Tesla or any EV seems to be more about price and or uh, the charging network and how inconvenient it may be. I mean, there seems to be a growing consensus. I don't maybe that's not the right word, but at least concern that EV growth is slowing. You don't seem to share that concern. The data doesn't support that, David. When you look at the data, and you know we, we publish it every quarter, you can see that in the third quarter, EV adoption globally is at 12%, and fourth quarter, it's growing nicely. So could you say the growth has slowed? Yeah, it's slowed, but it's not going down. And as long as you continue to see, as you've seen in Norway, as you've seen in the Netherlands, as you've seen in China, as long as EV adoption grows from, again, do the math, 12% globally to 60, and that's our forecast 
but others have forecasts that are similar, between now and 2030, you're going to get 35% volume growth. And then the question is, how much is pricing going to come down by? Cybertruck is going to be priced, and that's coming out you know, at the end of the month. That's going to be a $70,000 vehicle. So while I do think you're going to see some pressure on pricing, you're going to see some offsetting products like Cybertruck that are going to cause pricing to continue to move higher, average selling price. And I think that the big investment question is, have gross margins, auto gross margins bottomed? They hit 16% in the third quarter, because as you know, they yep. took pricing down. Have we seen the last set? And what we've seen the last couple of weeks is prices have actually started to go the other way. They've had three separate price hikes in China, and the rumor is that they're going to have another one next week. It does sound quite a bit more bullish when someone says, oh, Tesla had three separate price hikes in a short period of time, but really, I see that as one price increase because the increases were for each different trim. So really, to me, that just one price increase, basically. But it is true that it is rumored that probably we will have another price hike in China. However, we did see some inventory discounting in the US. So I'm not sure about margins bottoming here. It's certainly very possible, especially if Tesla creates good ads and good advertising. It's very, very possible. And really, I think if the ads are incredible, it's inevitable that Tesla's demand would be much, 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 much higher, leading to many price increases. As long as I believe that A, EV adoption can continue to grow from 12 to 60, which is what we're thinking, and B, the gross margins have bottomed, you want to be in this stock at 55 times earnings, putting up 40% earnings growth, regardless what Elon Musk is saying. I do think also that Elon's a smart guy. I've seen him in the past where he'll say something that, you know, later he realizes it's not so smart and he will delete his post. I would be surprised to see him not talk about this topic for a while because he's got 120,000 people who work at Tesla who depend on the Tesla brand staying, you know, the strongest in class. And I don't think he wants to, to hurt those 120,000 people if all of a sudden the, the consumer is saying, I'm not going to buy Tesla because the CEO is making dumb comments. And that's something that we can all agree on. Elon is smart. Although Ross did say that Elon is more of an idiot now than a genius. Elon replied with correct to this tweet from James Hader say Tesla is losing market share all around the world. But in fact, Tesla is expanding its share of new vehicle sales globally as it does every year. Don't believe me? Take a look at these year to date charts. So he shows how each year Tesla is actually doing better. That's looking at the whole automotive industry, but I think it is also good to look at the EV market share that Tesla has. And that is slightly different, especially in China. Troy says, even though Tesla sells more cars in China each year, the situation is not great because sales of non-Tesla pure EVs have increased at a much faster rate. This is China and this is the US. You can see that the red bars are sort of going up at the same rate here and here, but the difference is the blue bars, which is the competition. And I remain convinced that the actual competition is going to come from China for Tesla. I agree with James. I think this take is the most accurate. Tesla has no direct competition anywhere. This is fact. Model 3 and Y dominate their respective segments, but Tesla has lots of indirect competition in China. There are decent options at higher and lower price points. Without this, Tesla's growth in China would be higher, closer to what we see in the US. Legacy is pathetic. Tesla needs to expand into new vehicle segments to help growth reaccelerate in China, which Tesla is going to do. And I can already hear people saying, oh, but Tesla's going to be so late. Tesla therefore is not going to be as successful as it could have been. But I'd like to remind everyone that the Nissan Leaf came out in December of 2010. Tesla Model 3 came out so much later than that. But Nissan is not doing great. And that's why I believe the next generation vehicle will do really well for Tesla. Tesla does not have to be the first company to do a low price TV to be extremely successful. Tesla just needs to offer the best value for the money, which Tesla is really good at doing. In the meantime, Volkswagen will recall 100% of its ID4 EVs in the US. The recall aims to take care of flammable interior materials on the sunshade. Yeah, I do not think you can fix this issue with a software update, nah. -uh. Yesterday, I didn't have any pictures of Elon meeting the president of China, so here it is right here. It appears that the meeting 
has been fairly good. The president was very friendly to Elon Musk. Here's some good news. There will be a $400 million energy storage system built in Australia using Tesla's mega packs. This project will be able to power 350,000 households for two hours. 